Hi everyone, Ta here. So this is the Pixel 8 Pro and it's the latest flagship phone from Google. Their next attempt to win customers over from Apple and Samsung. After a week with the phone, here are my initial thoughts. The design isn't dramatically different from last year. The cameras have been grouped together. They went from glossy to one of the softest matte finishes I've ever felt. And it's got slightly more rounded corners, which I will say pairs much better with the various elements of the Pixel software. Hate or love the camera bar? It's become the Pixel's most defining physical feature. It's just how you could easily recognize an iPhone or Galaxy phone. The moment you see this, you know it's a Pixel. And I think that's a good thing. Looks aside, you know what I love most about the camera bar? The fact that it doesn't wobble when you use it on a table. Both the current iPhone and Samsung flagships wobble like crazy. On the Pixel, thanks to the camera bar, no matter where I'm tapping, absolutely no wobble at all. It's solid. I don't know, it might be trivial to a lot of people, but yeah. I love that. I know everyone's been gushing over the bay colorway, but I'm a big fan of neutrals, as you can tell from my selection for phones this year. I'd rank them porcelain, obsidian, and bay, in that order. There's a new temperature sensor on the back, and while I can't see myself using it all that often, it does give the Pixel a unique hardware feature that isn't found on many other phones. Personally, unless they have bigger plans for it, I think the resources could have been better used on other aspects of the phone. The display gets a few nice improvements with the most notable being that it is now completely flat. So finding a good screen protector should be much easier. What's interesting is that the resolution actually got a slight downgrade. It's such a small decrease that I don't think anyone's gonna notice. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. HDR and peak brightness both got a nice bump, making this one of the brightest phones out. While the extra brightness definitely helps with visibility under the sun, I found the display to be very reflective, which takes away from the viewing experience when outdoors. Something I've noticed is that auto brightness is very conservative on here, and Pixel phones in general seem tuned to be a little dimmer during day-to-day -day usage. For example, I need to set brightness all the way to 70% to match what 40% brightness looks on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. They also set the resolution to high instead of the full resolution out of the box. So yeah, it looks like Google's trying to prioritize good battery life over everything else. Speakers are a noticeable improvement over last year. The 7 Pro didn't have much low end and sounded almost tinny compared to flagships from Samsung and Apple. The gap is much closer this year. The 15 Pro Max still sounds the best to my ears, but the S23 Ultra and Pixel 8 Pro are right behind it. So Google continues to use an optical in-display fingerprint scanner rather than an ultrasonic one, which many consider to be more reliable and secure. The scanner has been perfectly fine to be fair, but from my experience with various optical scanners, if you tend to have dry skin, it does struggle from time to time. But the big story is that it now features a secure face unlock option thanks to machine learning, which allows you to use it with something like banking apps. The fact that they were able to do this while still only using the selfie camera without any additional sensors is kind of a big deal. It now has a class three biometric security rating, meaning it's unlikely to be tricked by an image or a face that isn't you, unless you have an identical twin or something. I tested it with both my banking app and password manager. To my surprise, they both worked right out of the box. It does require that you tap this confirm button every single time, which makes it not as seamless as it is on iPhones, but they could easily add an option to skip that in the future. Something with dedicated sensors like Face ID will still have the edge because it works in any lighting condition, whereas Face Unlock on the Pixel 8 Pro is pretty much unusable in low lights. But hey, this is one of the few phones on the market that offer both a secure face and fingerprint unlock. Google has completely revamped the triple camera system. And my initial impression after hundreds of photos is one of the best phones in the business for photography just got better. As much as Samsung and Apple have improved, I still find myself preferring pictures out of the Pixel more often when comparing them side by side. But it really boils down to personal preference these days. It still has that moody, contrasty look that you've come to expect, but it's been toned down. There's less noise in general, and the colors across all three lens are way more consistent now. The 5x camera has quickly become my favorite because of just how good it is. I've never had more moments where I'll take a picture, look at it, and just think to myself, wow, I can't believe I took that photo. The front-facing camera now has autofocus, which is long overdue. I don't love the selfies as much as I like the back cameras. It's perfectly fine, but at times, the processing has a little too much contrast and over-sharpening. I do love that Google is giving us more tools and options in the camera app. 
You can now capture photos in the display P3 format for more vibrant colors. The Pixel 8 Pro is one of the first Android phones to capture and display photos in Ultra HDR, which basically retains more details and makes any bright parts of photos really pop out of the screen. There's a new toggle that basically lets you manually select which lens to shoot with rather than letting the system decide automatically for you. Google, of course, also added pro controls, bringing a more professional experience to the camera. Now, AI-powered camera features are a big selling point for Pixels, and this year, they're taking it to another level. I've been having a lot of fun with the new Magic Editor feature. It's really hit or miss, especially if you try to move and resize objects, but I found the sky swapping to be pretty good. There's editing apps out there that offer something similar, but having it built right into Google Photos is nice. My favorite new feature has to be Best Take, which can basically do face swaps. As crazy as that sounds. The idea is to take a whole bunch of pictures and then use best take to find the best combination of facial expressions so you end up with a group picture you're happy with. It's kind of scary how good the face swaps are. Unless you were there, you wouldn't really know that the picture was AI generated. As many have said, what is a photo anymore, right? The iPhone is known to be the video king, and after some side-by-side -side tests, I don't think the Pixel 8 Pro is going to be challenging for that title right now. But the gap really isn't as massive as it's been in the past. Google's Video Boost feature, which comes out in November, is supposed to really level up the Pixel's video capabilities, so we'll have to wait and see how that goes. The Pixel 8 Pro is powered by Google's own Tensor G3 and has more AI and machine learning capabilities. Say what you will about its raw performance, but for day-to-day -day use, it's still one of the smoothest phones I've ever used. Right up there with the iPhones. The software is super clean with just a handful of Google apps pre-installed, and I still love the way Google utilizes haptics throughout the UI. The subtle knock whenever you pull down the notification shade or unlock the phone is such a nice touch. One thing to note, because the Google search bar and the at a glance widget are both unremovable, the Pixel's home screen can feel a little more restrictive compared to other Android phones. I personally don't mind it, but an option to remove them would be great. My only real performance complaint is that there's still some noticeable hesitation when using the editor in Google Photos. If you're a numbers type of person, there's definitely improvements in terms of benchmarks, but it still sits below other flagships. While I've been able to play games like Call of Duty Mobile perfectly fine, you'll likely have to lower graphic settings for a more demanding game like Genshin Impact to avoid frame drops. The reality is, if you care about mobile gaming and want the best experience, there are definitely better options on the market. During my battery test, not only does the Pixel 8 Pro run cooler than my 7 Pro, it's slightly more efficient at certain tasks too. Unplugging at 8 a.m. and spending an entire day on mobile data, the Pixel 8 Pro easily made it through the day with like around 30% battery left by 9 p.m. Now the current flagships from Samsung and Apple both run cooler and are more efficient, but hey, it's a step in the right direction and I think most people will be perfectly fine with the battery life, unless you're a really heavy user. The Pixel 8 Pro can now charge up to 30 watts up from the 23 on the 7 Pro. When plugged in, it'll do 0 to 50% in 30 minutes, and a full charge took around an hour and 40 minutes or so. So Pixels are known for their clever AI features that make them some of the most helpful phones on the market. Call screen, hold for me, and now playing are personal favorites of mine that I think are extremely useful. If you like typing with your voice, the dictation on here is now scary fast while still being extremely accurate. But here's the thing, those are features that have been available on all the previous Pixels. Camera stuff aside, the Pixel 8 Pro doesn't exactly add any groundbreaking smart features. Better speech recognition, audio recording summaries, and improvements to call screen are all fairly minor to me. What the Pixel 8 Pro does get though, is the promise for seven years of OS updates. Now that's groundbreaking. Even if I likely won't keep my phone for seven years, that's a huge win for consumers. It also puts pressure on other brands to step up their updates too. And it seems to be working. So my mom was still using a Pixel 3, which just turned five years old now, and she stopped receiving updates two years ago. So I upgraded her phone to the Pixel 7a, 
but she likely would have kept using the Pixel 3 otherwise. This is great news for people like her, as well as anyone buying a used Pixel 8 several years down the road. Obviously, a promise is just a promise until they follow through with it, and it's gonna be a while until we can see if Google actually delivers. Look, it's been the Apple and Samsung show for way too long, and I'm honestly happy that Pixels are slowly picking up traction because Competition is good for everyone. There's a lot to like here. The refinements to the design, a secure face unlock, a revamped camera system with more AI powered editing tools, and of course, seven years of updates. With that being said, there are still aspects of the hardware that do have room for improvements, especially with the higher asking price. So I guess the big question is, are they doing enough to sway high-end smartphone buyers away from their iPhones and Galaxy phones? I'm not 100% sold, but the cameras are still so damn good and they're offering a unique experience that you can't really get anywhere else. That's a great foundation in my books. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'm out of here. Bye!